Hello, soldiers and sailors. This is your old friend, Ted Husing, with a special report to you servicemen everywhere on the 45th chapter of football's greatest classic, the Army-Navy game. The Army team, which these cadets have come here to witness in its ninth and biggest contest of the year, is thus far an undefeated 11 and one of the great ball teams of the season. You can hardly blame these cadets for feeling confident that this year's mighty team will snap the five-year run of Navy wins and take the trophy home. Here come the middies. Now it's the turn of the gentlemen from Annapolis to take the stage for a brief second before the ball game starts. They've got quite a ball club too, you know, also rated as one of the best in the land. This year, their All-American tackle, Don Whitmire, has added glory to his last year's record, and veteran little Hal Hamburg has brought these blue-clad midshipmen to their feet a hundred times already in beautiful broken field running. to take their places in the stands, there's not one person here, including yours truly, who's sure which way this game will end. Let's look around and see who's here of note from nearby Washington. General Ben Lear, whom some of you GIs have heard of, I'd imagine. He's the commander of your ground forces, and he's talking to some wounded veterans who got in for free. And looking pretty cold down there in the third row is General George Marshall, your chief of staff. General Half Arnold, that's Admiral King. He was a middy once, and he's looking pretty cold today. And there's Admiral Leahy, the President's Deputy Chief of Staff. Just a second, there's a commotion down there. A GI limousine with armed guard is on the field. No one knows who it is. Yes, they do, it's Navy's goat, wrapped up in a Navy blanket. And believe you me, he needs it here today. And there's the Army's famous mule out to shake hands with his opponent. They don't seem to like each other, but it's going to be a tough match anyhow. Just a minute, they're announcing the war bond sales the tickets brought. There are the figures, $58 million. Not a bad haul for Uncle Sam in one cold afternoon. But the crowd begins to cheer because here comes Navy's 11, and the time for the ball game has come. Coach Blake of Army and Coach Hagberg of Navy get to their feet as the teams line up. Army won the toss and decided to kick. Doc Blanchard's toe gets the ball off downwind. It's a beauty. End over end, way down to the Navy end zone where Bob Jenkins of the Middies takes it up to his own 31 before he's knocked out of bounds. Jenkins again through tackle. Then he's been hurt. Yes, Navy's ramrod All-American halfback is coming out of the game with a head injury. That's a mighty loss to Commander Hagberg's 11. 150-pound Hal Hamburg takes over for Jenkins and goes back to punt formation. It's a long one. Kenny gets the ball and hands it to Dale Hall. But wait a minute, it's a fumble, and Leon Bramlett of the Sailors has it. It's Navy's ball again. Navy single wing to the right with Hamburg back. It's the old Statue of Liberty, with Bill Barron scampering wide around left and dodging Army tacklers for three more yards, and Navy's number one first down before he is shoved out of bounds. Two line plays fail to budge the cadets' defense, and Navy's Jack Hansen is back for the kick. There it goes. as the smallest quarter ends. Directions are now reversed, with the cadets once more in a tough spot on the Army 17. And Army has to kick out of trouble. Doc Blanchard back, he gets the kick away, it's a short one. Hamburg of the middies takes the ball and twists his way back into Army territory before he's finally pulled down on Army's 33, and now Navy has a swell chance for a score. Navy's really threatening now, and goes into action with Hamburg back. Looks like a pass. But there's an interception. Army's big center, Ub Fuson, number 53, pulls the ball down, and Navy's drive is stopped. As Cadet Davis, America's high point man of the year, shakes loose with brilliant interference and sweeps around right for five, for ten. He's in the secondary, and now it looks like Army's really on the move. At least the cadets think so. Well, the Middies are having a tough time with that Army power. Max Miner takes the ball this time and drives through the Navy line for six more and another first down. Watch that Army hole open as Davis scampers past into the 15-20 kill. Army's ready for that kill now with Dale Hall back. Watch the right side of the line open as he knifes through and down to the 10-yard line. The five, and he's over for the first score of the game and six Army points. Red Blake sends in Dick Waterhouse for the conversion. 
There's the kick, with Waterhouse breaking all collegiate football records with 47 conversions in a single season. And the scoreboard chalks up, Army 7, Navy nothing. With two minutes left in the half, Navy takes to the air from their own 32. A quick flip from Bruce Smith to Hanson, but instead, Hank Holberg pulls it down for Army, and dodging angry Mitty shoves back up to Navy's 36 before he's down. Army's determined to beat the gun, and Kenneth fades back for another. And there it goes, a long 40-yard pass down to Blanchard in the end zone, but it's one foot too long, and Navy gets the ball. With seconds left to go, Hamburg fades for a pass to Barron. There it goes, and by the time he's pushed out of bounds at midfield, Navy's chalked up five more yards. The last play of the half as Hamburg goes back again to try for the clinching play. And once again, it's good. There's a lateral to Ralph Ellsworth. As the half ends, Army 7, Navy nothing. And the Navy performs its traditional salute to Army's mule. In the first play of the second half, it's Navy's ball on her 45. Hamburg back. He drops it, he's got it again, and tries to shake clear, but Army smears him for a five-yard loss. And so Hansen goes back into punt formation for the kick. There's the pass, but it's blocked. And it's in the end zone for a safety to the distress of several midshipmen. Army nine, Navy nothing. Navy's ball now, and there's Hamburg going back for a pass. A 15-yard throw to Jack Hansen, who sweeps clear of tacklers, but he's tipped, and down he goes on Army's 32. Now Navy's putting on some heavy pressure through the air as Hamburg wings another toss to Barron for another big 15-yard gain before the cadets stop him. Hamburg again off to the right, and a jump into the air for a bullet toss down to Leon Bramlett, and Navy's almost over now. It's first and one yard to go for a Navy touchdown, and Army held them. The ball's about five inches short of a touchdown now, and cadet rooters stand in anxious silence, waiting for the next play. Here it is, Navy single wing to the right again. And the ball goes to Scott once more. This time he's over. It's a touchdown. And Navy's really back in that ball game. As Dick Fields converts to bring the score to Navy 7, Army 9, while the Blue Stands go crazy. Army's determined to widen that two-point lead now as Kenna hands the ball to Doc Blanchard. He's almost in the clear now. Just Hamburg between him and the score. But Hamburg nails him after a 20-yard Army game. Army power cuts loose again as blocking around right shakes clear a path for Glenn Davis on end around. Navy's back to the wall now, as Kenna gives the ball to Blanchard again. Watch the hole. He's through. He's in the open. And he's over. It's the second Army touchdown. Army fourth and three to go in midfield. There's the pass. It's Blanchard with the ball. And blocking clears him through for six more and a first down in Navy territory. Man in motion to the left. And Doug Kenna flips a quick lateral to Glenn Davis, sweeping wide with swell interference around left. And Bill Barron arrives too late to prevent another Army tally as Davis skids over for his 20th touchdown of the year and a score of 23 to 7 in Army's favor. Well, that's all, you guys. This has been a hell of a game and quite a fight. So long. <laughs>